our journey through this book of 2 Timothy. We've come to this final section. Many people, when reading Paul's letters, come to a section like this and just skim read it as just uh, a list of greetings and final thoughts. But these verses are actually really important. As Paul pulls together a whole lot of the key themes that we've seen in the letter, but he also models for us some important things that we need to take on board as those who want to continue with this work of proclaiming Christ right till the end of our lives, until that day when we are standing at the side of our Lord who has saved us. The sermon I preached on this section I called Stand By My Side. Well, as always, I encourage you just to take some time to read this passage a few times for yourself. There's some very important repetition that we see in this section and some key themes that we've seen throughout this letter of 2 Timothy that come out. So just keep your eyes open for those key themes again. Spend some time praying that God would help you to understand his word. Because as we've seen in the previous sections, the Holy Scriptures are God-breathed. They are the very word of God to us. And so we need to handle these God-breathed words uh, with care. And we need to pray that God would help us to correctly do that. As always, I'm just going to highlight some of what uh, I've seen in this text. And I hope this will be helpful to you. If it is, I encourage you to share it with others. uh, Like this video. Comment in the comments below if you have further thoughts or questions on any of this. And what we see is this section is topped and tailed by an imperative or a repeated imperative. Do your best to come before winter. Do your best to come to me quickly. Uh, As I said, these are imperatives, uh, verbs that are commands. And some people have said this is Paul's main reason in writing, just because he wants Timothy to get to him. Now, there's a lot more to this letter than just a call to Timothy to come to him. Very importantly, he does want Timothy to come to him, but it's all in the big theme of the letter. Paul himself wants to finish the work of proclaiming Christ by continuing in the truth as he suffers, endures suffering, all in view of the life to come. And he wants Timothy to come to him quickly so that he can give him a final encouragement to keep going with this work of proclaiming Christ. So it's not just because Paul wanted comfort from Timothy. He wanted to urge Timothy to keep going with this work. What we saw in the previous section, he didn't have much time left. He knew that his time for departure was coming quickly. So he says to Timothy, come to me quickly, get here quickly. It's actually the same Greek word. And he puts a time frame to this, try and get here before winter. We don't know the exact time frame to that. Uh, but it's within the year, a few months' time, he wants Timothy to make sure that he can get to him. And we see some other repetition in here of uh, people who have deserted Paul. And this is part of the suffering that we see him facing. Uh, He says, uh, not only did Demas desert him, but everybody deserted him at his first uh, defense before the Roman council. Uh, He also speaks of the suffering that he faced from Alexander, who did him a great deal of harm. Uh, He speaks of the suffering that he's faced, uh, like the lion's mouth. And he's trusting God, the Lord, to rescue him from every evil attack. So again, there's this repetition of enduring through suffering. But throughout this book, he's been pointing Timothy to the message of the gospel. He's spoken of it in a few different ways. In this passage, he speaks about it as the message. It's also been spoken of as the gospel or the truth or the holy scriptures. And they are all about uh, Christ Jesus uh, who came into the world to save sinners. So he does put the spotlight on Jesus again in this section. He says Jesus is the one who's ultimately stood at his side. Jesus is the one who will rescue him from every evil attack. He is the one. Uh, who will bring him into his heavenly kingdom. So to him be the glory forever and ever. And he ends by putting the spotlight on the Lord and on his amazing grace. But Paul hasn't only been reminding Timothy and us as we've read this letter of uh, this message. He's been reminding him of the task that this message might be fully proclaimed. Paul has wanted the world to know about Christ Jesus who came into the world to save sinners. And here he's 
urging Timothy uh, with these final words of encouragement to continue with this task. Paul has also had a lot to say about uh, the day when he will stand with uh, his Lord in glory. And in this passage, he also speaks of that. He says, he will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. Now, I think one of the most important things that these final verses model to us is the importance of having others by our side in this gospel work. So although he speaks about uh, people who have deserted him and harmed him, he also mentions a number of other people to encourage Timothy to say these people are still going with the work. Um, he sent uh, Crescens to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. They're continuing with the gospel work there. And he says he does have Luke with him. Now, uh, this is uh, Luke the doctor who wrote the Gospel of Luke uh, and the book of Acts. So he's a very significant guy to have with Paul. And we see him uh, joining with many of the journeys uh, as we read the book of Acts. All of a sudden, the language is the language of, and then we went. So you realize that Luke was with Paul on these journeys. So Luke was with him and he says, to Timothy, come to me quickly and bring Mark. Uh, this is John Mark, uh, who we also hear about in the book of Acts. We hear in the book of Acts that he was actually uh, somebody who had deserted Timothy, uh, Paul on one of his missionary journeys. Uh, but here we see, obviously, their relationship has been restored because he says, this Mark is helpful to me in my ministry. And this is also the Mark who wrote the Gospel of Mark. Back in chapter 2, uh, verse 2, Paul had told Timothy, uh, what you've heard from me, entrust to reliable people. And Paul is very much modeling that to Timothy, He's saying, you yourself come to me, Luke's with me, bring Mark. These are reliable people who Paul wants to hand on the baton so that they will continue with the work. And we can see this just by a few things in this text. He speaks about uh, bringing his scrolls, especially the parchments. Uh, so we don't know exactly the content of these. There may have been uh, segments of Old Testament writings. There might have been parts of the, the letters that Paul had written to others, some of the theology, the doctrine that he had reflected on, that he wanted to pass on to Timothy, Luke, and Mark so that they could continue with this work. Very importantly, he wants to pass on the baton. He mentions, too, his cloak here. Um, I think the link there is the fact that winter's coming. Uh, there's nothing very special about the cloak other than the fact that he wanted to be warm. But there was something very special about these scrolls and parchments. So in these verses, by mentioning uh, these key characters and this list at the end, also gospel partners who we meet in the book of Acts, he mentions a number of people who are sending greetings to Timothy and he wants Timothy to send greetings back to them. And all of this is modeling the importance of having uh, gospel partners at your side. Uh, but he doesn't only highlight these gospel partners, he does also highlight those who stood against him and he puts the spotlight on Demas and Alexander, the metal worker. Uh, he also says no one at his first defense came to his support, uh, but he does focus in on Demas. Now, Demas was somebody who had been a fellow worker. If you go and read in Philemon or Colossians, he's mentioned there as a fellow worker with Paul. But because he loved this world, he deserted Paul. Um, we've seen in chapter 3 the danger of a misplaced love. And Demas had forgotten the importance of loving the Lord his God with all his heart and loving his neighbor as, his, as himself. And he had rather, uh, he was being shaped by the love of this world. Now what we've seen in earlier chapters is that the love of self and the love of money and the love of pleasure, rather than the greatest love that he had been shown uh, in Christ coming into the world to save a sinner like him. He had forgotten this. And he had forgotten the eternal big realities uh, that we saw at the beginning of uh, chapter 4, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, the, the big eternal scope that Paul wanted Timothy to keep in mind, Demas had forgotten that. Now, we don't know much about Alexander, the metal worker here. Uh, there are a couple of Alexanders mentioned uh, in 1 Timothy 1. Um, he's, there's an Alexander mentioned alongside Hymenaeus who had shipwrecked their faith. 
This might be that Alexander. It also might be the Alexander from Acts, who was a part of the, the metal workers there. And we don't know exactly who this guy is, but clearly what we see here, he strongly opposed our message. So he stood in opposition to the gospel. So where these guys, um, Luke and Mark and these, were partnering in the gospel, uh, Demas and Alexander were opposing the gospel. And so Paul is again just reminding Timothy that it's going to be hard. You will face harm. People will desert you. But right at the center of these final verses, uh, Paul says something very important. Here in verse 17, But the Lord stood at my side. In that moment where he stood in Rome before uh, the Roman council, nobody came to his support, but he wasn't alone. Uh, the Lord stood at his side and gave him strength and strengthened him to do what? The Lord God strengthened him to finish the work of proclaiming Christ. This glorious message of salvation through Jesus was fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles heard it. That is a massive statement that Paul makes. With the Lord strengthening him, he was able to finish the work that he had been given to proclaim the truth of the gospel at, on that center stage in Rome. And in that moment, at his first defense, he was delivered from the lion's mouth. So he wasn't condemned to death at that moment. But he did know that he was on death row. And so where he says here, the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his eternal kingdom. He's not saying in an earthly sense that uh, he will just live forever and the Lord will keep on rescuing him from you know, the Romans and others who stood against him. But he did know that on the day when uh, his final hour came, he would be brought safely into the heavenly kingdom. So just as the Lord stood at his side uh, through all his life as a Christian, he knew that he would very soon stand at the Lord's side in his heavenly kingdom. And in response, he just erupts into this chorus of praise. To him be the glory forever and ever. And Paul knew that very soon he would be with him in his heavenly kingdom forever and ever. And he wanted to encourage Timothy with this, knowing that no matter what Timothy faced or Luke or Mark or any uh, partners in the gospel, whatever they faced, they need to remember that the Lord stood at my side. Now he had pointed to this in chapter 4 verse 1, in the presence of God. Everything we do is in the presence of God. And for those who know and love Jesus, who have been saved by him, uh, we have the privilege of knowing God's favorable presence with us by our side as we continue with his work. And that is exactly what Paul encourages Timothy with, with his very last words, the Lord be with your spirit. The Lord will be with you. Just as the Lord had stood by Paul's side and gave him strength, the Lord would be with Timothy and Luke and Mark and all those partners in the gospel, strengthening them. And then Paul ends with a glorious final word, the word of his grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus. Grace be with you all. All of God's people need all of God's grace all of the time. And so what we see in these final verses is much more than just a few lists of names and hellos and goodbyes. Uh, Paul is modeling the importance of gospel partners by your side. Knowing that the Lord is at our side, we also need others at our side to help us to fully proclaim this message of Christ. And we need to do this until the end when we are in his heavenly kingdom as standing at the Lord's side. And so in many ways, these final verses pull all of these threads that we've seen in Timothy together with a final encouragement and a final call to finish the work of proclaiming Christ by continuing in the truth as you endure suffering all in view of the life to come. And so I encourage you as you continue to think about these verses and reflect on them further to rejoice with Paul and uh, knowing that we are in this work together, partnering in the gospel, knowing that the Lord is at our side, knowing that soon we'll be with him in his heavenly kingdom. And may he strengthen us to continue to live lives that bring glory to him, resting and relying on his grace 
until that day when we are with him forever. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this journey through this glorious letter with us. And I pray that you would continue in these truths as you continue to tell all the world of King Jesus who came into the world to save.